All right, good evening, everybody. I am uh, Houdat42, when you were watching the Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide Randomizer, uh, round one of the Coliseum competition that we're having. This is the second in our double header tonight. Uh, so we have two great runners with us tonight, uh, Grimwolf and Ravelin Bay. So you are going to see them attempt to find seven characters and 10 espers tonight and go to Kefka's Tower and attempt to beat the Mad Clown himself. The winner of this will move on to the next round, but the loser is not out. The loser of this will go into the returner's bracket, and they will have a chance to recompete for glory and potentially win the whole thing. So uh, just, just because you lose doesn't mean that you are totally out. Uh, as I said, I am Hudat42, and I am joined here by my co-commentator, Keith McRock. McRox. Keith, how are you doing tonight? I am doing great. I'm just... I'm just Nervous because I'm doing restream. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you very much. So yeah, uh, we do have a, a great restream team here. So as I said, I'm Hudat. Keith doing comms and restreams. And then uh, we have It's Naku doing tracking. So uh, keeping track of everything that we're doing tonight. Uh, before we start, I will go over some of the little flag sets we have here. Like I said, it's a seven character, 10 Esper uh, flag set, which means that they need to find seven characters and 10 Espers of any kind. And then you'll be able to go to Kefka's tower to attempt to defeat Kefka. This is a progress times two seed, which means that whenever they find a character or Esper, the levels of the enemies will increase by two, uh, up to a max level of 40. Now that does not include Kefka himself, but uh, regular bosses and enemies will scale up. Um, we have the undead flag off, so you cannot use Phoenix down on stuff like Phantom Train, you know, kind of cheap out there. You're gonna have to fight your battles. Uh, we're not using any kind of normalize or distort. Uh, shops are shuffle with 20% random, and rods, super balls, and elemental shields are available for sale. So you will be able to buy a little bit of an offense if you need to. And with that said, we are underway. Looks like we have a Mog and a Lock start. Uh, let's see if we can find out. Mog has Throw and the Lock has Rage. Those are not bad starting off with. And a mod lock start means we're probably going to see quite a bit of Narsh to start off with. Uh, yep, looks like Ravelin is going straight to the World of Ruin for the uh, the check here. He's going to, to go to the weapon shop and see if he can potentially find a piece of Magicite or maybe a key item that he's going to like. All right, and I'm Carbuncle here. Carbuncle or Thunder Shield. Uh, Grim Wolf is in the World of Balance, checking out the, uh, the school there, and looks like he's going to go do a little bit of looting and potentially go to the Lone Wolf check. Oh, Ravelin looking at the Curse Shield. Five fights to uncurse that. That's good to see. I think just about everybody would take that. Uh, Keith, do you have a what, what's your limit on on taking fights for that? I, I wouldn't do anything usually more than about a twelve. Even that's a little suspect. Yeah, I'd say twelve is probably, and it's early if you get it with twelve. Uh, anything, you know, depends on when you get it. If you're getting it right away and you had something, maybe if you knew fixed encounters were coming. But yeah, it you know you, it's a risk, especially in an early party, just risking someone. Oh, I see Celeste is peeking out that cave there. It's just something that probably they're going to both note uh, for later on the uh, Umaro check if it comes into play. Yeah, definitely always good to see Celeste there. Grimwolf. Looks like maybe you forgot about uh, the Moogle charm. So in Worlds Collide, uh, you are given three Moogle charms so that you don't have to fight any battles you don't want to, even in places uh, you know like Kepka's Tower, but you have to equip them. So that's... Uh... The only one downside there. And uh, Brianna Fovana says mock start. You can see the peanut gallery's out. It's a late stream, so not sure what's going to happen tonight. All right, so. Um... For anyone not familiar, yeah, this basic, this is one of our more basic flag sets. There's not a ton of craziness in this one. 
you're not going to see a lot of bosses in extra places. You're not going to see a lot. Of, you're not going to see any repeats of bosses. So, something to note and something that's um, really nice to see, I guess, knowing going into the sea that you're not going to run into a random, you know, uh, poltergeist anywhere on the map. Yeah, absolutely. This flag set is uh, it's it's pretty standard. It's it's not too dangerous. It relatively friendly and and the great thing about this so uh, we have 32 people that are in this event right now and and a lot of people are fairly new to the world's glide community so this is a pretty pretty nice flag set to start out with and definitely never going to turn down a shadow there at the lone wolf check but uh grim wolf choosing not to do kefka at narsh right now we'll see if that changes yeah usually if you go up there it's a thought in your head but still it's a single and there's just so many things that you'd have to try and fight there that are not worth it. Uh, especially with a character up there, at least that's worth that's worth the trip. Um, and it's a shadow where you're going to get another one. Uh, progression is only 2x, so for every, you know, every character in Esper, it's only going to, the enemy levels will only go up two, so it's not uh, unusual to see people go for a few checks here and there. Uh, and shadow being another free check is always welcome. Yeah, absolutely. You just, you know, fortunately it's not a character that having to do that double walk back up there to do Kafka and Arsh is, is never fun. So I, I don't think it's going to come to that, uh, but we will see. So we're Avalon doing a little bit of shopping right now. Looks like he's in uh, South Figaro. Probably looking for something to take a little bit of the sting off that cursed shield and, and see if he has a ribbon or anything yet, but really anything to to prevent uh, your character from going too crazy worst case you just completely unequip him and let him punch the teammates for 10 damage looks like he went for a peace ring so he's got some That's obviously a ribbon is really like the greatest thing to see there but any any uh ailments that you're going to decrease is is worth it like uh, grim wolf is in world of ruin nar she's going to Get his Esper and his Cursed Shield and probably be happy with what he finds with both. Also good to know uh, for those with that choice there, uh, you can go get the that Thunder Shield. You can go get uh, if you find Terra and you end up fighting Welk. It's, it ends up behind it. So something good to know that if you do end up in that choice, it's going to be an extra bonus added to it. Yeah, definitely. And in that same vein, because uh, he has Mog, he can go into the World of Ruin and go to where Mog is standing and get the other item from the Lone Wolf check, but in this case I don't think he's going to do it. It was just something pretty low-tier item. Easily forgettable for all of us. It was so great, I didn't remember what it was at So per usual, lots of looting, shopping. Um, the shops are have a, an extra little shuffle, and then there's a 20% 20, 20 random. So you're going to find every once in a while a, a good item. It's possible that you won't get any good items, but uh, the chances are you'll find something in a shop if you, if you want to go long enough. Depends on what you're finding in your chests. Generally, if you can find some some bit of early offense with one of your characters, it's probably going to drive you. Um, but you can also find, you know, rods and super balls out there, and always popular early game. Yeah, definitely. So, what are your thoughts on super balls? I'm not a big fan. I, if I have them, I'll use them, but I, they're usually something like ten thousand gold a pop. To me, the, the chance of doing 256 damage for 10,000 gold is just not appealing. Yeah, they're really popular. I know a lot of the a lot of the better runners swear by them, and I I feel like whenever I use them, they don't work. I don't know what it is. If I'm doing, I'm like, I keep, there's only so much you can do. You just kind of throw it out there, but uh, it does not work for me. So I'm I'm always a shy away because I I have bad luck, I guess. I am most definitely not a top tier runner, so you know maybe don't do what I do. Uh, yes, but sir. I do know Grimwolf found Mega Lictors for sale. Uh, I think they were something like 40 grand. So if we don't end up seeing a Magimaster fight, that might be something to keep in your back pocket there just to have that protection for when you find Kefka. 
Yep, and the items generally can range in price uh, lower or higher, and that is lower. I know I, I ran a seat earlier, the same flag set for my race, and mine were 64000 so 40 that's a that's a great price compared to mine. Yeah, definitely. I want, I want to say the base price is something like 50 that's like the median or whatever. Yeah, I had the, the high, and that's probably, the 40 is probably the low. <laughs> so, but having it is really helpful. You know, in that final, you know, that final battle, uh, just having a quick pick me up, um, always great to have. And Franklin, uh, thank you for that. Franklin says a Minerva, Megastrod, and Aegis Shield in the Returner's Hideout. Now that's that's good loot. Yeah, that Minerva is. is uh, I know I found one in mine. It, it drove one of my characters the whole game. Just having that high of stats and then the elemental immunities or just reductions is, is great to have. Yeah, it looks like uh, Rav did a little bit of grinding there, fighting some crass hoppers. I don't, I don't know why I really like the name of that enemy. Always cracked me up. Yeah, they, there's a few names that always like stuck out to me and that I remembered. Um, but yeah, that's definitely one of them. And it has, like, I forget, always forget, and there's another half of it, like, with a different color, and I don't remember it at all. So. <laughs> yeah, another looks like Genji shield there. So it's definitely, and even a wing edge is another one. I had that, uh, a nice one from the back row with the instant death possibility is always nice to have for uh, certain battles. Yeah, absolutely. Every time I get a wing edge, though, I end up fighting a whole bunch of undead enemies, and they get uh, killed and immediately brought back to life at full health. So, yeah, that always confused me. Uh, I remember as a kid when I played it, I, I always was like, I don't get what's happening right now. Why? Why are they just coming back? I don't, I'm so confused right now. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of why and what the heck just happened in Final Fantasy VI for sure. Yeah, toe cutter is another one. I really like toe cutter. All right, so it looks like Rab's heading up to do his mog check now. We'll see if he liked what he found, so he'll decide to stay and do the other Kefka at Narsh check as well. It might yeah, I would I would be inclined to do it because it's right there. It's a little bit of grinding. It's a little bit of levels. It's early, so and you're up here, right? I mean, the the worst case is something really terrible, and you've lost a little bit of time, but. I like anything grindy early just to get myself a few safety level. Yeah, and then having sh this be Shadow is also tempting because then his two characters might be in good shape and he can put Shadow quickly on the bench possibly. And then he's got two characters at least to fight with. Whereas when right, yeah. Wolf went there, he didn't have that so much that choice. Yep, looks like uh, Grimwolf is going to go check out the South Figaro cave. This is usually one of the first ones I always go for. It's quick. There's possibly some, you know, some people don't go for all those chests, but at least one on the way. You're going to get a quick heal, and it's it's not time-consuming, so um, just depends on what he ends up seeing. Yeah, definitely. You can heal before and after. It looks like Rab decided not to do Kefka at Narsh. And Grimwolf gets a Shatter Nook. Not, not my favorite enemy to see. No, it's it's going to be an interesting battle. Like I never know how it's going to end up, but I feel like any of these ones that use magical abilities, like the early ones, just wipe you. If they use physical, you're going to be you know in, a, in better shape. But those any magic attack early just wipe you out. Shatter Nope. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Looks like that's exactly what happened. So. Yeah, that's a quick. That's a quick recognition. Like when you lose two people that fast, you just get out. Get out and yeah. regroup. Yeah, and I think I have a problem with you know being stubborn and not saying you know what this I'm not gonna win this. I'm just gonna waste five minutes trying to get my party back together. Just reset. Go do something else. Come back. That's hard to do. Yeah, there are certain things where I always think I shouldn't be doing this, and I just kind of keep going for it. <laughs> <sighs> Grimwolf. 
Grim hitting the uh, the shopping hard. <laughs> That's the other thing. If I'm in a mode to, to really want to shop, and then I just don't stop, and it takes way too much time, and I never find anything. But I guess that's the breaks. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely always on the lookout for, you know, obviously for buying power, luminous, something like that. But uh, dried meat, warped stones, that kind of stuff. Uh, I found some force armor in one of those barrels, so not not bad. And then he found, uh, and he saw warp stones. I don't know if he bought some, but obviously warp stones are great because uh, besides Kefir and Arsh, a lot of areas actually let you leave. Um, so looks like Rab's about to head to his uh, Shatter Nook. We'll see what he thinks about it. Yeah, he might be in a little bit better position to deal with this. But uh, Grimwolf checking Strago's house. Yeah, I know fairly recently, Atma added in a lot of checks here in the Massa. Yeah. I never checked yeah. Strago's house. I don't know why. It's not really that far, but just walking upstairs seems like it's not worth it to me. That was always in the, the mix. It was the one yeah. outside, like the outside chests were added in. So it just gives you another. And then that was the same time they added in the, if you go to World of Ruin, chests that are outside not inside houses uh will have different items and so you can get them in both so a lot of people will hit up both south figaro in world of balance and world of ruin so they can get extra loot yep definitely the uh the 10 p.m stream chat going on but yeah it looks like rav's gonna gonna try to take down this chatter uh, see if see if maybe that's a play because I, for me, if I get find a boss Oof. that I can't can't beat, I, it takes me a long time to go back to it, and sometimes that can be the wrong wrong thing. But oh, experience eggs uh, in barrels and for sale. Yeah, this this that magic is still far too strong, even for like Shadow got one shotted by that bolt. So we'll he's just gonna keep chucking things and hope he can get there. Well, it looks like Mon has got the Minerva on so that may. That will help a, a great deal, so that could be enough. Yeah, that may pull him through, and then then he'll be insufferable talking about how great Mog is after this. Whole lot of selling going on for Grim, <laughs> trying to get get some extra cash flow in to buy some buy some more experience eggs, I assume at this point, but. Yeah, he's got egg fever for sure. Starting to see what he can give. Yep, he's anything he can get rid of. He's he's looking to get rid of it. Yep, the elixir, throw it all out. Yep, just enough. Now, early game, it's going to be uh, beneficial, you know, especially to outdistance those enemies. But, but oh yeah, oh and he finds a mega elixir. Wow, okay. Well, that makes That's getting rid of that regular pounds, elixir. Yeah, I'm always likely to sell elixir, especially early game. Um, you usually find at least a few, and if nothing else, you could buy it back later, but you want the experience saying as soon as you can get it. Yeah, that and getting rid of um, pretty much anything. Magic, replace ethers, x ether, any tincture, I just sell them. I feel like they never pretty much never get used unless it's desperate and then either way you're probably just going to use an elixir anyways but gill potions yes use them for money there's a lot of things in the game that are just useful just to as cash yeah Ravlin's still uh, still going on here with Chatternook and uh, fighting the Starlet part with Pearl, not not great, but yeah, this is this is one of those where he's 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 in it, and he's gonna at this point you got to keep going. I mean, I mean, he can win this. I don't know that unless Chatternook really pulls something weird, he's got a good shot at winning this. It's just is it gonna take him ten minutes and put him by? Yeah, sunk cost fallacy, and that's. That's so hard to do, to say, like I said, I need to reset out of this. I can't do this. Looks like Grim is doing it. He's going to start grinding for some levels, because he's 
in the same spot. He's going to keep fighting these and then heading into that that uh, healing little pond uh, in between. So I guess one of these is two is going to get this this uh, this battle. Yeah. So uh, in the first race I did, we had Shadow early too, and, and I was asking Terra about Floating Continent. I'm a big fan of Floating Continent early. Uh, how do you feel about that? I'm a, I'm a big proponent of fixed checks early. Anything with fixed battles, because by the time you actually fight, you know something at the end, you're gonna get. I just like the early levels. Obviously, you can backfire and a lot of people, but you can still like back out multiple times from it. You know, if you find something you like at the first, jump off. You can jump in. The, you know, there's there's multiple. You can jump off at multiple sections. Uh, I'd prefer it to like the Magitek Factory because that one like. It takes. You're gonna have a grind. I mean, you can still jump out if you have something to warp out with, but I just prefer the fixed battles early as opposed to that one where if you want them, it's late and you've already put a lot of time into it. Yeah, I agree. Um, Ravlin defeated Chatternook and found Strago, the uh, the goat of the game, fan favorite there. But Sketch really not great. Uh, Sketch is somewhat useful against Kefka if you're in a whole lot of trouble and you can maybe get an Ultima. That's probably about it. Uh, it runs in the family, so. But That's yeah, true. not, uh, yeah, you're not going to see a whole lot of that being used, but, uh, I mean, may, say, say what you mean, it does, or say who you will, it opens up a lot of checks. No one likes most of them, I, I'm fine with them, but yeah, it does open up quite a, quite a few things. Uh, yeah, and anybody who's seen me in chat knows I like Strago and I like the Burning House. It's kind of a meme. I don't really care all that much, but uh, it, it's a good way to get passions in flame. Uh, but I had the worst ever Burning House one time. It was all the Siegfried trap chest fights where he goes, ha, 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 blah, you know. Every fireball was that. Now, those were in the back in the, the bad old uh, point eight days, but uh, yeah. So we got round two for Grimm. Uh, we'll see if he has better luck this time with his uh, Shatternook fight. Rav heading over to Thamas. I know he's, he's so it looks like he's heading into the burning house. He did some some quick looting, but uh, he's gonna head into the Casa do Fuego. Right, that's uh, that's not too bad. No, you'll live with that. There's a lot worse things that you can find in there. Oh, we get some good imp action. That's always exciting. Strago, hey, is the, oh. thing. It's the thing we were talking about. Ah, it's like we knew it. We we knew it was coming. Well, the fire skein uh, does not work inside this house. Apparently, I guess that's fitting. Maybe, maybe app rights actually secretly terrible. That's better. A water edge, much more useful inside the burning house. Who could have guessed? Yeah, it's probably well, useful for the levels themselves, but um, every battle in this. Uh, is you can still run away if you had smoke bombs a little faster, but uh, at this point he's gonna probably try and especially the, these are easily winnable. He's gonna try and get some levels so that hopefully at the end he doesn't have too much trouble. Yeah, the the big thing about the burning house besides the fact that these battles are difficult to skip is that there's no save point. So if you go through all of this headache and you get to the boss and it's something terrible like Magic Master. Uh, that's when you really need to think about should I cut my losses because you spent a lot of time in that sunk cost fallacy. So for anyone who's familiar with the vanilla game and are wondering about some of the, the uh, things being used, the randomizer does a scaled element feature that was one of the newer ones. Uh, and you're going to see... Uh, sometimes you'll see lower... As the enemies get... Uh, harder, you're gonna see 
more tiered in the same element, but a higher power things, so you'll see a lot of different things from a lot of different enemies, and it's very confusing and very frustrating at the higher levels when you have certain enemies just start pulling out Ultima on you. Okay, uh, yeah, Ceiling Cat uh, bringing up there the commands. Uh, if you enjoy what you see here, please give our staff and our runners a follow. Uh, Grim Wolf and Ravelin Bay both play quite a bit. Uh, Ravelin's been playing for a really long time. I see more of the you know, original people here. So yeah, definitely give them a follow. Yep, both the runners uh, do stream often. I know Grim does has a good setup. Um, you could follow us, uh, but as I believe I heard on the previous stream, you just have it. Uh, I am in the same boat. I have it, but I don't really do anything with it besides doing a couple of these races. <laughs> it's uh, having a having a Twitch account that you can land on is a really great way to avoid the auto playing of super loud music at 10 p.m. on the front page, so I can just go and watch the streams I want to watch without any noise. So, works out. Yeah, that's the same boat. For me. So follow the runners, though. <laughs> and follow... Follow Naku. And follow Ceiling Gat. But uh, Ultra's four at the Burning House. That's not too bad. Uh, you know. It could be a whole lot worse, and it's not surprising to see Ultra's behind a house on fire. Yeah, you'll be okay with this. You can live. Uh, and then, I mean, you're not going to get any experience, because... You're going to get blown away, but... Oh, and speaking of which, you get blown away, but... Hopefully you get something good out of it. Your experience with seeing Ultros is smiling. And you get to watch a long little cutscene at the end. <laughs> oh, it's Cyan, uh... I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Ravlin made a promise about his use of cyan in this to see if that holds true. If I'm not mistaken, I happen to see some of... Was it the last stream where cyan was also the rescuer of the burning house, I believe? Okay, yeah. I think I remember I tuned in just for a second, and I think it's the same again, so... <laughs> I think I have watched at least half of the races so far, so they're, they bleed together a little bit. Yeah, I have seen bits and pieces of lots of them, so yeah, things start to keep going. Um, Grim still uh, still holding on, about the same length of fight as Rav had, so not obviously not great, but um, it's not like uh, it took Rav, you know, it took him a while too, so it's not the worst for him. But yep, uh, thank you, Ceiling Cat, updating those commands for us. So. Uh... I guess uh, follow Franklin, uh, Frajan86, and it's Naku, and uh, sounds like leave you and me alone, huh? And uh, while we have that up, I'm going to... Uh... Gonna plug the Coliseum bracket there. So if you want to follow along with the tournament, you can do that. It's on uh, challenge.com. I assume I'm saying that correctly. But you'll be able to see uh, how everyone's doing, what brackets people fall into. And again, just because you lose in this battle does not mean that you're out. You can go to the returners bracket and you can fight for victory at the end there. And also we have a YouTube channel. So if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you very much. Hope you come and to our Twitch channel and hang out and chat a little bit, but either way, uh, definitely check that out. You can, I want to say we're going to have most or all of these races up at some point. Yep, more uh, growing the footprint and getting things out there, but uh, I, I, this so far, I've, I've enjoyed this. Uh, I like the format, and uh, it's been great because uh, I like async races, but you can't watch everybody else, so having different seeds is really nice, so you can actually keep up with everything and see and catch a race in the middle of the week if you haven't done yours, so very nice. Yeah, definitely. So everybody here is playing this week with the same flag set, but with different seeds. So this seed just belongs to Grimwolf and Ravelin. So like you say, you know, if somebody who hasn't done their race yet can watch this, 
have fun, learn a little bit, and still do their own race without ruining anything. Yep. So Grim has oh, gone into the uh, the Veld Cave, one of Shadow's checks, and has seen there's an Esper to be had. Meanwhile, Rav is at the Doma check, one of the quicker ones, but has run into Senor Behemoth, who has quickly become one of my least favorite bosses, um, especially with Scaled Elma. He becomes particularly nasty. Yeah, so I always like the conversation, um, what everybody thinks, what does SR Behemoth stand for? I say it stands for Strontium Behemoth, but I think I might be in the minority with that. Oh no, that's not good music to hear. So, God S at the uh, the Veld Cave and a quick exit for uh, Grim. So far, not enjoying these uh, this boss selection. But Rav, uh, with the I I do say Senor Behemoth. Uh, when he fight him, he comes back, which is still weird. But he comes back in his second form, and he was able to X zone him away. So, um, good realization that he had X zone to begin with. Um, because I always forget when I have those things. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, X Zone, one of those things that you use maybe every other scene, you know, but, but when you have it and you need it, it's really great to have. Excuse me, Sir Behemoth is his dad. Yeah. No. I, if you're Sir Behemoth, I either want a monocle or a top hat or preferably both. So it looks like Grim's gonna do some more grinding. He has those experience eggs, so probably worth his time to try and uh, get a little stronger, because um, he's not loving his selections of boss so far. Yeah, fighting uh, fighting chicken lip. I always just assume that's where uh, bulk chicken wings come from. Chicken with eight legs is kind of horrifying. Yeah, not the worst uh, set of bosses. Those are generally in vanilla very early on, before like when you first get to um, the uh, Magitek or you know Vector Continent. So early on, unless you find those chicken lips in all together, and you get the uh, if you leave one, they'll use Quake. So, uh, yes. but this formation much better. And we have Rav heading to the uh, Mount uh, Mount Zozo, the free check. Uh, also a dragon here, and dragons are scaled, so it's not out of the question to hit up a dragon for some good experience while he's up here. Uh, Grimwolf running into uh, not such a great combo there, Veteran and Daedalos. Now Daedalos early on doesn't have enough MP to do anything at all, and you can Phoenix down or Revivify him, but Veteran can be that. I once ran into them at, in the Serpent Trench, and that's all they did, and it was terrible. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's... And so, Io, not... Oh, not a problem there. Uh, apparently instant deathable. So Rav finding the Dirt Dragon, not a friendly one by any means. Uh, generally one I try to avoid uh, if he pulls out... Yeah, so he's going to put throw in some life three there because if quake comes out usually it's a quick ending but uh he's gonna try and hit him really fast <laughs> a lot of some bahamut s for action usually not seen that early but um worth the experience if you can get it yeah definitely and you know we don't see a whole lot of offensive use of espers but bahamut is definitely one that uh, you won't have in your back pocket Ooh, great block of the Hone Tusk. And then Stone. Not the best. Yeah, too confused now. That's not great. Not, not what you want to see. <laughs> it's okay. Mog's just going to cast Pearl on somebody. Oh, okay. Yeah, boy, did he. <laughs> that was not kind. And Cyan goes for Dispel. Real helpful. Yep, uh, Grimwolf running into the instant death fun with PM Stalkers. Always sounded like a sleep pill to me, but... Yeah, something odd about them. 
but uh, yeah, they don't uh, they don't they don't go away quickly from that instant death. So, oh, but Rap makes it through his dragon, so he'll get some good experience and hopefully a really good item that he wants. Uh, either way, it's going to be top tier of some sort. Yep, flame shield. Always happy to see that. Yep, always good. Uh, I think he already has some high level magic. I saw a fire three in there, but lots of uses. Nice. Fire three, pearl, life three. Uh... So eventually, uh, I, I'm sure he'll just crack that over someone's head. Yeah, when you've got a Minerva and a Paladin shield and some pretty high level spells, you know, uh, his feeling pretty good. His shield game is is very high right now. He has a Genji shield, an Aegis shield, a Paladin shield. He's 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 doing okay on shields. It's much better than having strong like the helmet game. There's not many helmets that are that great, but shields are shields are great. A whole bunch of cat hoods. Looks like it's going to be a dead check for Rav. He's going to get a top tier item, but uh, no progression up here. But that may be okay. Now he just hopes he has a warp stone so he doesn't have to walk all the way out. Yes, the walk of shame. It's not just for your college days anymore. Interesting, a gem box. Not, I don't know, depends on what your setup is, but he does have some good magic so far, but either that or you can sell it, as we've said. Everything, some of these items are just great for money to find something better. Yeah, gym box is one of those things that sounds better than it really is, and you also have to keep in mind that it changes your magic to X magic, which means that you cannot summon an Esper when you have it. Yeah, I always remember yeah, that after I've been in a fight and I want to use an Esper, but yeah, it's usually the case. Hey, yeah, it's great to uh, to equip it and Fenrir for your calmness protection when you go into Final Kefka, right? Yeah, you, generally if I do if I do forget, it's because I yeah I put the Fenrir on them, so I I wonder where it went and then realize that I obviously put it on that person. So. But it looks like he's gonna up. use it. He is gonna put it on uh, Mog, so makes sense. He's got some good magic. Might as well try and go with it. Yeah, why not? It looks like he's going to be doing the Doma Dream check. Well, uh, Grimwolf just found a fairly cheap pair of Marvel shoes from the guy in the wood. Uh, not progression, but not a bad relic. It's one of those things that it's not the very top tier. I think I heard somebody describe it as S minus tier. It's really good, but it's not great. Yeah, compared to some of the other things that you can get in those checks i.e., you know, Illuminas and Ragnaroks and even those shields. Uh, it's definitely not what you want to see, but you'll be happy using it. Uh, you just rather have something else. Oh, well, we found another statue in this dream. This is this dream has turned out to uh, be more of a nightmare, I guess. Hey, yeah, Ravelin uh, clearly hungry because he's dreaming about spicy chickens. So, probably doesn't have, because I haven't seen him look for it, but uh, the best way to go after Poltergeist is to have anything that can do stop, because he is susceptible to stop, and that makes things a lot easier. But if not, um, that Pearl is, seems to be doing a great job. Uh, it looks like he's going for a Carbuncle, too, to get uh, that in there. But reflect, but... Uh, you can't reflect a fire skein, which is one of those other wrinkles that the Scaled Element threw in. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Before Scaled Element, it used to be that if you found Magic Master, you just put on a wall ring and uh, would you go get something to drink. Can't do that anymore, though, because you can get these abilities that are not reflectable. But yeah, Rav, probably okay because he has Minerva, he has Paladin Shield. I think this might just be maybe a, an annoying fight more than a, a wipe. But uh, Grimwolf taking down Chatternook, so... Feels good to, to finally get that going. Yeah, at the very least, he's, he's happy after uh, struggling on that one. And then probably really excited to find out who was the reward there. Um, oh, how could he not be? I can feel his giddiness from here. 
Looks like uh, Ravelin stole a red jacket and uh, might be having some stream issue. Oh, looks like we be back on track. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he's gotten through it. <laughs> uh, Grimwolf fighting tentacles in the sky. Uh, tentacles early is not great. At least he has four characters. When you have two or three, it's really bad. Oddly enough, this is another, actually. This is another a thing I saw from the last race. Another, it's because I said, wow, tentacles in the sky, huh? So... Is this even randomized amongst itself? Yeah. When it randomizes, then it just sets itself at random. But, so Rav continuing his uh, his dream, but the tentacles not taking very long, at least. So uh, hopefully Grim has leveled up enough to where he can start getting uh, getting a getting a roll on this one. Yep, flying demon pasta is no bueno, but. I think Saban is going to be there for Rav. That's that's always good to see. I'm always happy to see Saban. A lot of quick checks, back to back to back, you can do. Find yeah, out the, if he yeah. Hasn't all those checks is obviously I don't mind having him anyways, but just the checks alone, just having so many of them is, is always welcome. Saban, Celis, Terra, just having oh well, lots of options is great. So Grim getting uh, an Esper shoat for his troubles up there, so that's good progression. And we're starting to work his way up at least. Well, Rev continues the arduous dream where you just have to keep running your way through. And eventually, I've never understood the dream, but I guess it's a dream so you don't really have to understand it, it just kind of goes. Yeah, they have it to backtrack and run around. It's just really weird. Yeah, not not always my favorite. But now that I know it so well, I can get through it quick at least. <laughs> Especially in this, so. Yeah, once you memorize where to go and you memorize the little switch puzzle, and I, it's not too bad. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of three items for the, the price of two. And if you have a sword tech user, obviously there's a huge bonus with being able to get all the sword techs unlocked. Yeah, probably the biggest uh, bump if you can get that going. Uh, not surprising, Grim heading into his burning house, um, finding his apparites. Well, hopefully he knows that they like fire. Yep, checking out the casa. Uh, oh, Magi Master Four Rav. That's exciting. That's a fun one. <laughs> Let's see how he goes at this one. I don't know what he has in his arsenal. Yeah, I think with his defensive capabilities, another thing where he's going to be okay, but it might be a tedious fight. Yeah, I'm waiting to see how he goes about it, but he does have Meteor, so that's going to be good because it's not elemental, so it's going to hit. It may not be quick, depending on how strong, but it's going to work. Yeah, Meteor is it's a cool spell, but it's not nearly as powerful as it looks like it should be. I want to say its magic power is something like 29 or 39. I mean, it's not very strong, but it is non-elemental and it will work here. For those who don't know, Magimaster, usually at the top of the Fanatics Tower, obviously his, his physical defense is super high, so you have to use magic, but his wall change... Uh, changes which magic he is susceptible to and strong against, so it becomes extremely hard. But if you have uh, Berserk, you can uh, put that on him and he won't use it. Uh, oh, now he has it. And then if you can also always put on Reflect and just let him hurt himself, because he only starts wall changing uh, if you attack him. So you can always just sit back and let him kill himself. But Either way, it takes some planning to go into this fight. Yeah, and 
unfortunately we have it set so he will not cast a final ultima though that is a flag so if you want to play like that and have him cast ultima at the end uh, you can do it yeah i think i've done one seed like that and it was on the elite river and a lot of people forgot about it and most of us died and we we're very happy about that not very happy at all uh, yeah, it, so if you ever come in and join us, and I hope you do, and you get into an async or a broadcast race or whatever, please read the flags. Every once in a while, somebody will sneak something in there, and it's really important that you know what you can do. I remember a long time ago, somebody uh, made a flag set, and there was an intangier blocking a check. And you could run from everything, but only one person read the flag set and ran from it, and everybody else was trying to fight it. And that's a horrible, horrible fight, especially early. So always important to read the flags. Yep. Rabbit and then for our uh, our normal runners, uh, they always generally forget, but we don't have any solace for them because they've been around too long to know. So, so Rav, I see you went to the throne there and picked up an Esper. I missed what the first reward was because I keep switching back and forth on the screens, but... I did not see it either, but... Looks like he's at uh, three espers and six characters. So he's moving along. Uh, a lot of espers in need still, because he has had a couple dead checks. So um, depending on the path Grim takes, he can easily you know catch up. But uh, I know Rav has not done the check. Uh, oh, looks like he's heading to the collapsing house, and Realm is there. So that's always good to see. Uh, but he has not headed to that Veld Cave, where we know Goddess is waiting. Yeah, so uh, Rav got the Force Armor from Fire Chicken, and then Sabin, and then uh, the Esper. Yep, and with all these Sabin checks, let's see, he's probably going to hit a bunch of these, and then Realm's going to open up some good checks. So he's going to have a lot of options here. As he goes into that monster, in, uh, the Master Pug in the Monster in a Box, as he just quickly tries to run away from this one. Not worth the time it will take. No, not at all. Uh, now, if you have Pugs, they can have Minerva's, and that, that can be worth it. The Master Pug. Yeah, I assume he's looking for that, or he's looking probably for Katana Soul for an offering for the long play, but not uh, not in the mood for the Master Pug. And check two on a monster in a box. Aloe Bear. At least you can just bring him back to life. Yes, and he can take your life. Yes. Well... I guess that was one for one on there. As Grim gets through his, uh, he gets sneezed out uh, as well, so he's going to get Cyan. So that's going to open up some options. Uh, we'll probably see some similar uh, play there because Rav pretty much exhausted those checks, but we'll see the order that he chooses. It's going to be interesting to see what Realm has. Realm's a very powerful character, very powerful magic user, so if she has a great ability, she has something like Shock, oh, that's going to be really nice. Yeah, I had Shock in my race. Uh, on Sabin, but still, I had Shock, so. <laughs> Takes a long time for them to start talk, uh, actually quit talking. Ah, she has ah, she Jump. Jump. Okay, well, again, Boo uh, Boo the Runner, uh, one of the World's Collide members, uh, famous for loving Jump. He is the creator of the Coliseum, so it's not surprising that Jump is seen to be everywhere in this thing. Yeah, I mean, it has its uses, obviously, if you can get it with, you know, it's going to boost um, some attacks. If you can get a spear, uh, if you can pair it with the Dragonhorn, you know, then you can still have another spot. Uh, I, I like using it when it works well with uh, fixed dice, but has a lot of uses, but we'll see what he wants to do with it with her. She, her magic ability alone is worthwhile having around. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Grimwolf playing everybody's favorite counting game at Ibich Rock, trying to get 22 pieces of coral. Yeah. We not... can't hear him, but it's not valid if you don't count out loud. Yeah. I generally have to make sure... I usually have to do an extra one or two checks of treasure just in case because you don't want to be wrong or he resets you. So um, as long as you don't get the... I've done. I've had it where I've gotten... Uh, you hit the, the little 
you know, pressure point, and you end up in the same room, and I've done that five times in a row, and it's very confusing. Uh, yeah, there's nothing that says you won't get stuck there for an hour and a half. This is true. Nothing, yeah, no, there's no guarantees in this one. Looks like uh, Zone Seek's got some pretty good offensive spells on it, and uh, probably get Realm up to speed really quick on all that. And it looks like Rav is going to go to Baron Falls and see if he remembers that he gets a free heal here. Yeah, the other I saw, I did note in passing, the Carbuncle has magic power plus two, I believe. So that that's going to be a huge one if you can keep that on her. Or well, possibly with an experience, I can just ramp up that magic power. Oh, yeah, she can, Realm can get really brutal uh, if you do that. You know, you can, you can have quad nines on tier two spells. He fights a Badgie Master Mini in the form of number 24. It was basically the prototype uh, from the original, you know, so he was okay, but uh, Magi Master far superior. But he tried. He tried. Yeah, he's doing his, he's living his best life, uh, and, but Robots and Waterfall, probably not a great mix. But... Probably one of the things I enjoy most is seeing things in weird places. Tentacles in the sky, uh, trains on waterfalls is always good. Lots of different things in different places. An octopus in a burning house. That was another one. Great. Yeah, I always liked um, the octopus coming up through. So Ultras 1 in, like, the opera house. It's, like, busting up through the floor. It's kind of a no one. But... So Grim... Yeah, number 24 is, like, Magic Master at home. Yeah. Grim goes... Uh, finally gets through and gets... Um, another of the lighter side, if you will. Not Inferno, but <laughs> the number 128. Uh, the, the one you'd rather see come into play. <laughs> yep, looks like Rav has a dead check there. You got a Pearl Lance, which, uh, again, not bad, but not progression. Yeah, not, not the best. And then, uh, Grim making quick work, so his levels are helping him now. He's made quick work of this one. Um... We'll see what he gets for it. Offering there, that's that's interesting. And wow, a lot of lots of dead checks. <laughs> a lot of dead checks to be had. I mean, Rav sitting at three seven, so he has his character set. He just needs a ton of espers. Um, so we'll see. Oh, he found one on the, the the he found a stray on the phantom train, so he's gonna have to go all the way through this because he needs the espers. But not my favorite. Though he did find the shop. Oh, nothing great. <laughs> yeah, not, nothing good there. So if you talk to that second ghost, uh, he will be a shop. Easy to mess it up and get yourself into a fight. But... Yep. So it looks like he's getting a few, just a few odds and ends, but uh, nothing crazy. Uh, looks like Grim's gonna head to the Dream. Um, so that'll be good. He'll get some more checks open. So we'll see if his choices benefit. So far, he's he's uh, he has skipped a few checks that uh, were dead, I believe. So hopefully, maybe this is his turning point. We'll see. Either way, it's been it's been rough so far. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, and just you, you look at the numbers. You know, two, five, four, seven. Rav's obviously ahead. It's not necessarily true. You have to think about what has been done, what hasn't been done. It's never quite as easy as it appears. So it, because the world's collide is so non-linear, it's really hard to tell who's ahead like, before you get to Captain's Tower. Also, forgetting which bosses were in there. So seeing the, the uh, yeah another person who ate wings before, before bed. So I forgot about Poltergeist. So yeah, the dream not being necessarily the most friendly. Hot wings before bed are always worth it. Yeah. But I still, I think his levels are going to be high enough. Um, these dead checks are obviously benefiting <laughs> uh, the runners because they're not escalating the enemies, but at the same time they're, they're getting experience, so get that going for him at least. Yeah, you know, and we were talking last stream, uh, 
you know, you're at 51 minutes in. If I'm either of these guys, I'm, I'm maybe getting a little bit worried because the times so far have been so good. I mean, people are really nailing out these 130s, 140s, 150s. If I'm not ready to go to Kefka's Tower, say, an hour, hour five, I'm getting a little worried. But uh, Rav fighting Dataluma on the train, always really cool to see him just instantly kicking through the air. Yeah, I mean, he's, I mean, he's strong enough. He's just he's just chasing you with it. So, I mean, at least this kind of makes sense, given his uh, the way his sprite is set up. Yeah, I think this is one of my favorite sprite and background combinations here. That one just looks so so serious. Going down really easy. Yeah, he's not going to be much at this point. He's generally never. He always likes seeing him, and at this point, he's uh, you know with all the again with all these dead checks, he's far out distancing him with his magic ability too. So and Grim also getting through his. So both of them at the same time finishing up their fights. Um, let's see. I didn't even see that. What did? Oh right, Rav's got it. At the, I forgot. It's at the beginning. <laughs> he got his Esper at the beginning of that train. Yeah. So Grim will maybe not super happy to see Force Armor, but I think he'll be really happy when he sees Saving coming up here. Yep. So Rav heading to the Imperial camp, and one of the uh, the differences that uh, uh, I was telling somebody last night: uh, no matter what you do here, you have to go through the battles. It used to be. Uh, only for a character. Now you have to do all these battles no matter what. So hopefully it's something that he doesn't mind facing. Huh. Okay, some squids. I guess that's yeah, pretty nice. If it's if it's dead check, you only have to do this. But yeah, if it's an uh, an Esper or a character, you do have to do the three fights. And I want to say it was that same fight, that same seed that had uh, in Tangier here had Doom Gaze as the three battle the year to fight so uh, can get yeah. rough but look yeah. at an experience egg for this it was a dead check so quite a few Oof. dead checks but i don't think you're ever really sad to see an experience egg unless you get you know, five yeah unless you already had the money to buy up a bunch and then you now are just sitting on extras but in the end you can always sell it get some de get decent money but yeah, and you want to save that 90 grand to go check out the auction house potentially, which uh, we might see Ravlin do because of his disposition with characters and Esper. Yeah, probably well in the cards to just head there and hope to get two out of it with all this, you know, all these, all this cash he can have. Oh, hmm. Oh. But what do you do if you're Rav here? Terra is a great character, but you already got seven. So, so there you go. I don't know if he has. I don't even know. I, I'd have to. I don't even know how many necessarily he has left. But she opens a lot of checks, so it's not. It's probably quick enough. And he's fighting Umaro here, so it's it's fast enough where I think you just race through it, and then hope that she gives you a lot of. Because most of her her checks are you know fine options. Um, they're not terrible. And you can warp out, you know, or you can warp out of them. So hopefully that's what he's going for. But um, yeah, because I, I mean, he only has, he still needs, you know, six, and his options so far are pretty limited. Yeah, I know. You, you, you guys are right. You always, you do always take Terra. I, you're, you're right. And then you hope she has something really, really good. As Grim finds his Magi Master, so <laughs> I forgot how bad this dream was. <laughs> yes, I can feel his excitement here. She is shocked. Yep, you take her and you dump somebody. There you go. Yeah, that was a pretty quick choice, so we'll see. I know he has not done, I believe he has not checked out the, um, the Veld Cave, where we know that there is an Esper. It was a goddess, so it was a quick out for a grim, but we do know that is there. Uh, yeah, we haven't seen uh, Alger's Mansion either, so. 
Yep, true. So we'll see what... So Rav's gonna go check out the the base there for hopefully some more <laughs> top tier. Um, so far, not some great loot. Uh, some more money? Ugh, not the best. Ugh. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. And yeah, that uh, was... Ugh. Yeah, I know that the uh, Final Fantasy IV Greater Prize community, they have like a uh, rake this treasure room thing. That This is going to be like a solid D, I think. Yeah, I don't... I don't know if there was really anything in there besides the fact that you can just, I guess, get some cash out of it at the very least, but not a lot. Ah, well, well we, we, know, we know who had the Moogle charm in his party. <laughs> but we get to see one of the best enemies in the game. It's Leifer. Let us rejoice. It's a bunny on a giant thing of lettuce. How can you go wrong? Yeah, like the, the very first area you go into in the game. So not threatening, but yeah. He's really just kind of hanging out, eating some lettuce. So, yeah. It's still better than the Final Fantasy VII, you know, evil house random boss or random uh, monster. Final Fantasy VII had some really jank encounters. This has some weird stuff, but Final Fantasy VII encounters were really strange. Yeah, a lot of these, there's some of the, uh, I mean, most of them, the weird ones tend to be undead, and I guess the, they have every right to be weird if they're undead, so. Alright, so. Oh, in the remake, it was amazing, actually. That was, yeah. Oh, so Grim is doing the little known, uh, going at the Doma check, going after the guards for some quick fights. Um, <laughs> little known. But you can fight them, uh, and if you're thinking about getting levels, that is an option. Well, Rav at the same time looks for even more loot in the uh, on his way to the sealed gate. Um, so far, not the best, but an ice rod. I guess that's going to be the best thing so far. We'll say that. Yeah, yeah, 19,000 in an ice rod, that's, that's not terrible. Nice ribbon, though, that's always good. But yeah, doing those those monsters at Cyan is really great because you can do as many as you want. They're not threatening, so they won't come and attack you like they will at Kefka and Nard. Uh, it's a very good, controlled way to get a little bit of experience and you know, say, okay, I'm, I'm ready to fight the boss now. And another dead check. Wow, and a helmet, a Genji helmet. Ugh, not. I mean, you'll take it, but at this point, Rav is just wondering. I, even if I was racing, I would have to be wondering if the other racer did all the other checks I didn't choose in his racing head. Because, <laughs> yeah, the yeah, times. We're, we're hitting an hour here. Yeah, the times come. Yeah, you. I mean, I even. That's how I I raced, and that's how I thought too. I was like, as good as I thought, I just assumed. They tend to check the same way, and or you know, because mine were going well last night, and I was like, "Wow, this is probably the same path." So, and it was right; they were way ahead of me. Like we got a uh, sir slash senior slash strontium behemoth going on here for Grimble. Yep, yeah, much stronger. Uh, both his party and probably just stronger in general for. Uh, Senor, but then when Rav faced him, but Rav escaped his uh, with only one party member left. So. A lot of chainsaw from Grim now. He's, he's, he's heavily on the chainsaw, which in the second half of the fight, the instant death part will be much better. Yeah, chainsaw is really cool, but drill is so much better because it's just always going to do what you want it to do. Chainsaw seems to know that it can't instant death stuff, and so it, it does that mode a lot. Oh, and a good warning. Uh, Rav is heading into this belt cave, but I don't think he'll have too much of a problem with Goddess, given everything that's happened, but uh, always fun to see. Uh, but he has many options around this with his magical abilities. Yeah, Goddess is one of the, the cooler uh, enemies in the game, cooler fights. Yeah, we'll go with cool. 
Well, see, when you're like me and you don't actually do any races or competitions, uh, things that are <laughs> terrible are they're they're great. It's a great watching experience. I mean, I enjoy doing commentary, uh, and from that perspective, it's yeah, it's great. It's gold. Uh, love these type of things. As a runner, this yeah, this the seed has been far from uh, far from pretty. Uh, yeah, this this seed is, is been a little bit rough. And I think that so that was actually. There has been two dead checks for EXP eggs, I believe. So, and I think Grim bought two. So he has, I think he is, yeah, loaded up with them. If he wants to just rock out with everybody having an experience egg. Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, Imperial Camp and the, that Doma spot. So Grim Wolf going to go get another one. Yeah. Interesting doing it back to back, but um, yeah, this is not going to be the worst of it for Rav. Shock, uh, some good spells, so that's that's going to benefit him greatly. Still doing uh, a lot of damage from uh, Goddess, but he's got enough magic. Uh, for those who don't know, Goddess tends to uh, love to love token, so your physical attacks, someone will just take them all until they die. So. Uh, just stick to the abilities, uh, anything that's not fight, and you're going to be a much better off in the, in the long run. Yeah, it can make some, uh, almost Saturday morning, some good experience egg breakfast burrito. Sure. Yeah, God, it's sure. going down really easy there. Yeah, I, I mean, the amount of, as you say, the, the, the amount of dead checks, like, and experience eggs. These characters, I haven't even really looked, but yeah, they're going to be distancing themselves uh, real easily. So, so. Yeah, it looks like Grim's Mog is at 36, and I don't know what Rav is at, but I bet it's pretty high. Yeah, with their, and especially on Grim's side, I mean, he's only done, what, nine checks, so that he's like double. <laughs> So yeah, not the worst. As he gets his number 24. So a little overlap now, because uh, Grim did a little, uh, some... Wow, that was fast. Then not shocking, but very fast. But So now they're starting to intermix, because at this point they're all doing most every check, which is... Real frustrating, I assume, but uh, we'll see how long it takes Rav to get his coral collected. Do you think about doing floating continent if you're a Rav or Grimble? But I mean, you need I those mean, you know, it's got a pretty good shot at giving you a couple at least. You have, you know, three up there. So, I mean, it's not a matter of, and you've seen, I mean, most of the hard bosses like that you really dread. You've already seen them, and you're already strong. Like, I don't see it taking very long at all. Yeah, I'm with Naku. I like Floating Continent. I know a lot of people like to avoid it, but... My seed, I was looking for one character, and I had done every single check, and I didn't have many, but mine came down to uh, a choice between... The Magitek and the Continent, and they both had one, but it was at the very end, actually, and it so it was not. It was a long, a long road to get that last character. Ugh. Yeah, Magitek three. That's one of those things that, man, you. A lot of people will will usually zone out after two, but if you have to go and double dip to do three, ooh, that is that's hard. Yeah. I didn't realize that Grim had not checked the shadow house there to get his Bahamut. So that's a, probably a nice one after, I believe he did three dead checks in a row there. So a pleasant sight. As Rav fights his um, end of Ebbets Rock. Uh, another one. This is number 128 should be, again, not long at all. Uh, yeah, but, you know, he's, he's not going to be super, he may be excited about what he sees, but it's definitely not progress, not what he's looking for.
Oh, so Grim's gonna head and find Realm. Um, do a little shit. <laughs> this is actually this is one of my favorite things to do and one of my least favorite. I always go shopping uh, from some fire rods for sale, but I always do my shopping before this. Uh, but the screen shaking makes it very hard to the point where when I go to shop, I still like it's still shaking to me. Uh, very disorienting. Yeah, I like how uh, you know everyone's panicking. It's like, oh, save the kid, save the kid, save the kid. I'm like, oh, well, we can definitely sell you stuff. I mean, you gotta you gotta keep the, the economy going. Yeah, well, they got a job to do. You know, they gotta you know gotta make money. So who is? Oh, so Rav, another one of these where you can take a peek. So if you go to Mobliz and you go into the first house, one of the kids will say exactly what is the check. So in this case, an Esper. So very happy uh, to see that for Rav. Uh, I do enjoy when it says uh, you won't take our, you know, Aegis shield away, apparently. And sometimes it's their prized possession. I mean, maybe, you know, they sleep with the Aegis shield every night. You know, kids are. Uh, yeah, but nice dog. You're seeing that a lot more. If you walk into that room and you immediately go left, you can skip the dog and cut scene. It takes about a second where you have to follow the dog down to the basement. I think yeah. It's not yeah. well known, and it doesn't save that much time, but you know, every little bit helps. Yeah, I have heard, I heard some chatter about that, so I never remember until I just, you know, go with it. But um, So this is obviously not one of, you know... The best fights because you have to fight Fumbaba until he Baba breaths two of your party away and then you'll fight the actual boss with only two characters now obviously there's always two preferred ones and generally they get blown away but oh, there goes realm and who's second and Tara yep so that would have been my guess somehow like you want those two and they got blown away but he's still pretty strong to be the boys club for Dolan, I guess. Yeah, apologies to Tara and Chad. I know that was really hard for you to see. Yeah, Dolan, another one. You're fine seeing this. I mean, oof, wow, Mog. Uh, all nines, quad nines on that fire there, with the fire rod, so. <laughs> Yeah, don't have one of those things. It's it looks like it's on fire and undead and on the ground, but it's not undead. It's uh, weak to ice and it's flying. So, you know, like you do. Another check. I think I would have done. I don't know. I want I, Phoenix Cave. I I usually dip in there quick because it's got a lot of uh, a lot of treasure and it's you know free. Um, at this point, you can still go at the dragon in there, too, if you want. I mean, I don't think they're at all concerned with getting anything from a dragon, but no. Also, not... I don't, I don't feel it takes as long. Like, especially if you know the routing well. It's not as long as it makes it seem. Like, you're like, oh, I have to do all, but it's... You can get through it pretty quick, especially if you really just want to run and skip everything. Yeah. It's not too bad. I think it's a mental thing, you know? It's like, ugh. But uh, speaking of, of Ugg, Rattlin is doing the, the main one that everybody hates. Uh, Fnatic's Tower looks like it's going to be not a character, so that's enough to get him to go up there. Yeah, at this point, they're just... Anything that they can peek for, you know, well, <laughs> they've had so many dead checks that seeing a non-character at this point, they, anything is possible for them, but... Um, Ugh, just climbing that tower, but his magic is strong enough. Um, for those who don't know, you can only use magic inside here. Unless you just decide to berserk someone, and then they don't have choice. They just hit. Yep. Uh, Fanatics Tower brought to you by the D-Pad Manufacturers Association. Yeah, and then it's worse on the way down, because you can hit those little inlets if you don't turn in at the right time. So, and... Uh, and or Lance there um, as the it's a top tier item that you get before the check so he's not using his jumper but it's good to have <laughs> now he's just yeah. waiting for this ghost to make his trip yeah that's 
adds a little bit of insult to injury having to have him spin around. Hyden. Yeah, Hyden's not. I, 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 I'm. I don't think there's anything that would show up, and I would say that's a that's a bad one to see. Like it's. Yeah. <laughs> Hyden's usually pretty rough, but I yeah I agree. I don't think Rab's gonna have any issues with him. And Grim going, uh, he does decide to fight the dragon, a gold dragon. Um, again, he shouldn't have any issue, and we'll see what kind of item he gets. I don't know what he's hoping for. I hope it's not uh, a Genji helmet at this point. Earl of Palooza on the screen, but. Yeah, Gold Dragon doesn't get enough love. It's not a dragon, it's not strong, but yeah, I mean, Gold Dragon is living its best life. It's doing the best it can. Yeah, I mean, the dragons, some of them are dinosaurs, some are dragons, I don't know. You know, they all, they're all in that same realm as, you know, fairly majestic beasts, so. And Rav for... Oh yeah, you have to wait. <laughs> That's the worst part. You have to beat it and then do the trek down to find out what you get. Ugh. <laughs> Another, he could fight a dragon, but I think at this point he is not bothering. He's he's done with that. Terra, it's gold dragon and it's beautiful. Dang it. Marvel shoes, well. Ugh. Another pair. Yeah. This seed they're, they're like just... Ones. You always need two pair, right? Uh, for anyone who's familiar with the channel and familiar with our runners, uh, you may be thinking to yourself, this is fitting, uh, but Rav did not roll this. this. This was not his seed, but it definitely feels like one that he uh, generally rolls. Yeah, there are some, some people that have reputations for, uh, for rolling rougher seeds now. You know, is there any truth to that? I don't know, but sometimes patterns kind of seem to, uh, to come out. Yeah, I, I've i always felt I have fairly bland um, choices. Like, I don't get I don't, I don't get really crazy ones, usually. Yeah, right in the middle. Uh, so Rav gets uh, Maduin, so happy with that. And I believe uh, Grim got a Genji glove, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Uh, I just saw Glove, I believe, on the screen. <laughs> uh, yeah, Gen Genji Glove. Oof. Yeah, Sans the Dead Checks, the seed's been pretty nice. Uh, a lot of it has been because of the Dead Checks. Like, it started out rough. I mean, that the, the first couple of bosses, that was a... They had to break it open pretty hard. That Shatter Nook was not kind. Like Ravelin gets try to get an Edgar through Fung Baba. Another character. Oof. And we have an opera check. Uh on Grimm's side. Yeah, I mean that could be progression though. There, there's no guarantee that you only need seven characters to get ten espers. Yeah, that's the yeah, I mean that's the way these are going. Though so, uh, Grimm obviously, sorry. This is the world of ruin, so Grimm's just going after another dragon. Um, why not at this point? Storm Dragon, another... Ugh. Yeah. Though instead of Storm, now he uses Blowfish. Taking night classes, he's getting up on his board. Well, yeah, it's... Yeah, I don't even know at this point. <laughs> I'm just a broken record. It's... We have all these dead checks and easy, easier-ish bosses, so... Um... He's got plenty of checks, at least Rav, I assume he's just going to go head right to Figaro Throne to peek that free one. Might as well. Yeah, that. I mean, that's a fast one, but then his other two checks are, are pretty involved. Yeah, the basement, uh, it does, it's another one I think, like the Phoenix Cave, it feels it, but like... You get through the cave fairly quick, and you can skip a lot of the treasure if you want, and just get right to it. But ah, wow, well, that's a grim for his trouble. A Minerva. So that at this point, I think you'll gladly take that. And then the thunder shield that we alluded to at the beginning of the seed for Ravelin. It's very rare that you're gonna be upset at a Minerva, even if it's kind of late game. Uh, 
usually good to see. Yeah, you'll you actually. The only problem is that if you go to you use it and then no one can equip it. But uh, as long as that doesn't happen, but that's the the worst when you have something and no one can equip it. So. Yeah, at the very least, Terra will be able to. So it's uh, original plus some random. So. Yeah, it's uh, original random, and then so it's fine. So Grim's heading into Bowser. So something that we haven't seen. A quick Chimera for him, and then yep, Rav heads right to the throne to get his free check at this point. <laughs> oh wow. He is just piling up the characters. Uh, maybe he thought it was 10-7, not 7-10. I don't know. <laughs> maybe we'll get a 100% run. Oh, yeah, this is... I don't know. What, I, don't, I don't even know. I mean, I assume he picked up some dried meat along the way, and maybe he goes to do that. But even then, the boss pool over there is so large at the Veld. I don't... Jeez, this is... Yeah, and I would say in 1427 a ride. As long as we're done by Monday morning, uh, I guess it's technically okay with me. Oh, and Rav, uh, behind the merchant, found a Genji glove back there. So I know he has an offering, but I don't even, he doesn't have any, uh, I haven't seen any fixed dice or any Valiant knives, but who yeah, knows at this really... point, it might just find him at bosses. I mean, they're going to open every chest and do every check in the game, so it'll get them eventually, right? Oh, and another... We have Go-Go at Bowser's. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look at him. Nope, nope. If, yeah, there's this no... I mean, the Flame Eater would have been a really quick one, but, like, Go-Go... I would have well, just bought it because, I, you know, worst case, progression is somehow locked behind Go-Go for him. And... Yeah, I don't know. Unless you really don't like the Zone Eater maybe um and some people don't i mean it's something that can be real bad for some people so yeah you just nope out and hope the one of the many other checks so we'll see rav heading into zozo for his um one of his terror checks uh we'll see at this point <laughs> he, i do enjoy that he's like and i do it too i just can't help but check the treasure um, cause I can't, I could never live if it was something like, I always think maybe the next one's the good thing. It's, it's always everything that you don't check is, is a wonderful. Generally. And what did he find? Ah, the Dream Stooges. Well, this should be quick again, as we've said. Because he's got everything that he wants to fight them with. They will be f fairly strong in their their scaling element. Should be interesting what they do use. Yeah, we'll see. I, you know, it could just be a little bit of a time sink. You, you always want to kill the one at the top first because he can cast life two uh, on the other ones, and he does pearl win. Yeah, you're always going to want to fight that top one first. And I enjoy if you fight the top and the right, because the one on the left is, will run away if, if you let him. <laughs> yeah, he will bail, but what's interesting is apparently, I've never seen it, if you have two of them on the screen, sometimes he'll run away and then come back. I have seen this, but yes, he does. He, he runs it and it will... He'll come right back. So it takes a while, uh, and generally, it, it's you're not gonna be it's not gonna be long enough of a battle. Usually, that's one of an early game, and it's a, a slow slow fight. But yeah, it, it could happen. Uh, so Grim is he gonna fight another dragon? He might, and then he's gonna be sorely disappointed. I believe this is the Genji helmet, so he's not gonna like the ending of this one. And Rav. Ah, an Esper. Unicorn. Doesn't matter what it was, he was happy. Yep, he's just happy to see those Esper. So he just needs two. So. Let's see if he ends up going to the auction house. Yeah, and I, at this point, with the, the way this season has gone, I 100% am just going, selling off a bunch of stuff, and then just hoping there's two. Hoping there's two espers in there and not one. 
I'm not sure what the, the odds are for people, but uh, I have a feeling the way the seed's been going, it might be one. Okay, so I was curious about calmness mitigation. Looks like uh, he does have access to life three, so that'll help him get through that that bot fight. Yeah, they had that. A, they've had this for a little while. I remember he used it against um, the dirt dragon when he yeah, did it the first time. Even though we're seeing it again on Grim. Um, yeah, he'll get his shield, and then I believe the next the helmet is what is outside. I believe. I don't know. Or no, was that in, was that the steel gate? Ah, I'm, there's so many. There's so many dead checks. I can't remember any of them anymore. Either way, just seeing that little glimmer of light is not what you want to see. Now we see how long this will take in the auction house. Wow! Okay. <laughs> That's... Uh, yeah, I'll take that all day, every day. Yeah, an Illumina for sale in the auction house, and it's going to be what? 12, 5? Or is it the one that goes higher? Is it 20? Yeah. I don't know. Either way, it's a steal. Wow. Well, that's... That's different. Yeah, you don't see that one a lot. Usually it's something like a Dirk. Yeah, or a... Uh, actually, I find that you're always paying 10 grand for uh, eye drops. <laughs> I'm not sure what these eye drops do, but they're worth it. Uh, the, uh, these healthcare prices are out of control. Yeah. The the people of Jador only have the finest products. It does seem like a very fancy place to live. It is. They like the opera. They like the finer things, art, mansions. Uh, Grim. Uh, Paid to keep their music the same in the world ruin. Grim is heading back for his uh, for a battle with Goddess. He's he knew what it was, so this is yeah, the long overdue. He knew this was an Esper, so Blowing Stone still available. See how long this. The good thing I believe in the World of Ruin, the item pool depletes, so there's an Esper, yep. and then in the other World of Bounce, I believe they don't. So you you want to make sure you do your auction house in the World of Ruin. Yeah, if you have 90,000 gold, you can yeah. purchase everything in the auction house. Ah, Franklin pointing out that there are two items at 10k, and one is in that reward tier, so I apparently never find that item, but it's good to know. Okay, no other Esper. Well... At least I predicted that, given the way this seed is, yes, one. And now he's going to go in and find Gogo. -Go. So He's going to be excited about it. <laughs> oh, man. I don't... So, Grim, have, you know, long ways to go on the Esper count, but... It's... The, the, I mean, the, the crapshoot of checks. <laughs> So while we're hanging out here, uh, just uh, another quick shout out to everybody. Uh, please, if you enjoy what you're watching, please follow Grimwolf. Please follow Rav. Uh, two great runners, obviously, uh, going through a lot right now. But that's the, the joy and the pain of Worlds Collide. And, you know, you follow for uh, for your tracker, uh, Naku, and for Franklin or Frazian86. Do not follow Houdet out of spite. Uh, Terra is incorrect. What do we land on with you? Kind of follow you, but maybe, but maybe not. Sure. Uh, I mean, oh, I do oh, stream yeah. races. That's about it. Yeah. See, I literally have no content. Keith at least does something. I literally have no content whatsoever. Well, you done messed up, Nacho. And uh, just another link here, again, since we're, we're hanging out. Uh, challenge.com is where we have our bracket for this so if you want to keep track really hard to watch all the races definitely fun to try but maybe you might miss a couple and, and you don't have time to, to watch them all so if you want to follow along with the tournament uh, there's your link to do it and I will shout out the YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube thank you so much please come and join us on the FF6 Worlds Collide Twitch uh, 
but we, we do have our older races archived there. Might be a delay getting them up. I think there's a 24 hour delay with Twitch for like contract reasons or whatever that you can't rebroadcast, blah, blah, blah. But you definitely go and check it out if you miss anything or watch the VODs. Lots of great ways to get a lot of great Worlds Collide content. Trust me, you could probably fill, all, especially lately, fill your whole day with Worlds Collide if you really want to. Yeah, plenty of plenty of it out there with all these uh, races. Um, each round, lots of races, so uh, plenty to see. Um, Rav quickly n making his way out after seeing Gogo again, not interested. While we do have Grimwolf going to the floating continent, so. Oh, hey, uh, you know, maybe that's play. You're at five espers, and it's 127 in, man. I'm, I'm starting to get worried. Yeah, I mean, this could be a quick, you know, at least two. You never know. Hopefully it's not just dead checks. Uh, yeah, so one one final shout out there. That is a link to the uh, FF6 World's Glide uh, actual randomizer itself. So if you want to play, just go ahead and jump in on that second link. But if you'd like to join us in the Discord, uh, please do. I was never big in a Discord. The only Discord that I'm in really is the Final Fantasy VI World's Collide and one other, uh, one other race for the Discord I'm in. But it's a good community, really positive, really helpful. Come on in. People are happy to to help you out. People will sit with you and go through a seed with you. We have a lot of good resources. Uh, Ravlin created what's called Moogle's First Seed, so it's a way to kind of guide you through what Worlds Collide is and, and how it works and whatnot. Um, people, there are a lot of lively debate. If you want to get into a good argument about which Final Fantasy character is the best or whatever, uh, go for it. A lot, a lot of good people. Yeah, likewise, that, that was the only thing I ever did on Discord, and I still, this is the only thing I really do on Discord. Um, I've since started using it to play, uh, do things online with people because the voice channels are good. But yeah, this is the only reason I'm on Discord, so. <sighs> oh, Rav found those Apparites again in the belt because he's checking for this. And Doomgaze uh, on his way on the floating continent. Uh, so, again, as long as you're not level 5, not the worst. And Rav finds... Oh, Rav's so happy right now. That's a double win. Oh, it gets... Yeah. Not only does he get his last Esper, it's Golem for uh, a good calmness protection. Um, so, yeah, he's... Super happy at the almost 90 minute mark to be finally ready, and he can't head to that tower fast enough. Great line, and Grim taking down Doomgaze, and uh, let's see what he, he finds falling down the sky. Atma, oh, that's exciting. What a one two punch there. That's a <laughs> yeah, fortunately, a free heal in there, but. But when you have 3,000 and 4,000 health amongst your party, at least you're feeling good. Yeah, definitely. And Rav, with many choices for his three parties, given the amount of characters he's accumulated. Uh, and then, thankfully, that they start at average level, so they're still doing well. The uh, other option of just that they start low level, which used to be the way things were always done, uh, much harder at this point to even bother using characters unless they're in your party. Uh, yeah, I mean, at this point, nobody's really worried about power or anything. It's just just the going fast part. Just how fast can I put the buttons to get this fight over with and get, uh, get where I need to go? Yeah, I, can, I can't even think, like, who else... Who, like, the, uh, the bosses we haven't seen that you would be afraid of. I mean, now we know Doomgaze is out of there, Atma's out of there. Uh, I mean, maybe if you see an Inferno who is naturally here, I mean, I don't think you're afraid of Doom. Uh, he's definitely out of all the statues is the one I like to see the most. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, you know, the worst case, I think maybe Guardian is just a hit point spawn. You know, it's just several rounds to kill him at this point, probably. But, you know, at most, these bosses can be level 40. So... There's, even then, there's kind of a cap, you know, you've out-leveled them. Yeah, it's not, um, yeah, it's not, it's definitely on the, uh, yeah, as we've gone through with many, many in this seed with all these checks, 
you're just he's you know, running as fast as he can through this uh, and I don't even think the way he's you know I, I mean I had the same thing in my run and then uh, the way I split up my party I ran into uh, some trouble but my levels I don't think were very high like not this high they were high but not this high Yeah, and it's, you know, again, it's you're at 130 and you're just getting into Kafka's Tower. you got to be worried. Uh, Grim, probably not not in a great state of mind now. Uh, i got to imagine a lot of frustration on the part of both, both these guys. Oh, for sure. I mean, this is this is one of the ones where at the end you're just a sigh of relief to be done. Um, you just, the amount of nonsense the seed has brought. Um, I assume Ravelin is going to be doing no treasure chests, because I don't know what he'd be looking for. He should be completely fine. Yeah, this is where you just plan to come in, and you just, you go. Oh, uh, Grim. Kefka, not, not too bad at all, not, nothing to worry about. No, oh, finding yeah. Kefka's fine. Uh, I mean, it makes sense that he's up there. Oh, sorry, uh, finding Welk is apparently also great. Yeah, we have not seen a lot of those lower-end ones, so a welcome sight. Okay, Alexander, so two uh, two Magicites for Grimwolf up here. Yeah, yeah it's definitely worth, worth the look, though. So that was the play. I mean, obviously he's still behind, but that's uh, that was a big chunk right there. goes to the root beyond. Yep, some more uh, more undead types on the continent. I at this point, uh, I would be running and just just yeah. not worried at all. Run. <laughs> I mean, oh, that was quick anyways, but yeah, I'm getting out of these things as fast as I can. Yeah, you almost want something like the uh, like Earthbound House, where you're so far above the enemy, they just they touch you and they run away immediately. There we go. Run from those ings. Yeah, those ings can be freaking annoying in the vanilla game. You don't know to buy a whole bunch of revivifies before you go into the uh, sealed gate cave. Well, two of the things on this uh, made sense. Technically, Kefka is on the continent in vanilla, and Atma's here. Just not this location, but yeah. I know a lot of Atma. Atma in the sky, Atma weapon on the uh, continent itself, but. I mean, he is the developer of Worlds Collide, so. Uh, True. You know, he's watching over us and making sure that everybody's having fun. All right, so Rav getting set up for his still final bosses before the final encounter, but let's see what Grim gets on his last check. And... Hey. Well, that's, I mean, that's three for three. So a big, big jump, but he still has to go. <laughs> See if he heads to the auction house, hoping for that last one like Raph did. Nope, he's heading to the cave. Uh, not gonna be happy, I believe, with this one. What was this? Yeah, he's thinking about it. He didn't peek it right, I think. Is that what he's going for? Meanwhile, tunnel armor is already gone on the other, so that was about what you'd expect for tunnel armor. Yeah, Terra. So... Yeah. Tunnel armor doesn't get enough love either. It's, uh... I want I want Atma to sneak in a flag where just, you know, randomly... You don't have any control over it, but it just... Tunnel armor is like ten times as powerful as normal. It's just horrible. I mean, it's got to be terrifying in the regular game because it just comes out of the wall. Oh, yeah, it's really cool looking. I wouldn't want to see one of those in real life. 
Yeah, Tame Tower bosses, uh, which is not surprising considering how many bosses we saw outside of the tower already. And, ah, uh, yes, the piranhas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is the joy of shuffle bosses versus random bosses, which was kind of a meme. It was the way to do stuff uh, not too long ago where you could end up with, you know, the joke was like, oh, we got six goddesses and one seed and... That's that's funny for a seed. It is not great for like a tournament. <laughs> yeah, it can be kind of funny, but yeah, the piranha is just annoying because it takes most people now. I you know whittle it down to one piranha and then walk away or just take a breath for a minute until they can try and get Rizza Pass to show up. But uh, yeah, not so much. Still just waiting away. <laughs> no, Naku attempting to uh, get exiled from the community. It's spot. I mean, it's in random. It, that can happen. It's just oof. it can. I mean, you and could I, also. I, I would love to see a scene like that. You could also put that random encounters and fixed encounters are all bosses, and it could be there too. It's well within the randomness. Um, but yeah, not what people want. I assume. <laughs> wow, there's still no wow, this is the, the the length of time for Rizapus does vary, but this this is definitely on the high side, which is yes, still fitting for this seed. Oh, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Yeah, it's uh, 30 to 90 seconds, and uh, of course, it's, it seems like it's probably about 90 seconds. Yeah, this one feels like, I, I, I'm sure that at this point, when he thinks, you know, and if I'm Rav, I'm thinking uh, every second counts, and you're like, oh, this is not what I want at this point when I'm trying to race through. And then once he finally shows up, quick work, but that two minutes that you had to sit there, not fun. Taking down Foon Baba. Just a big, big hit point soak. You know, he's uh, not super dangerous, but he has a ton of HP. All right, so Grim, most likely going to go do the same thing. Maybe that Figaro throne and auction house and then that'll lead him where he needs to go hopefully um and then hope for some some bad luck on the rav side uh if he manages it through but uh, another uh, if it if it uh probably not gonna last very long here either <laughs> no probably not but uh, interesting yes he doesn't do you not have any ice spells? No, I haven't seen a lot of ice. Um, uh, but they have a lot of other really high-level magic. As Grim, uh, I guess this kind of makes sense. He knew that there wasn't a character at Kefka at Narsh, and he's got plenty of options. So I guess you're already halfway there. Why not give it a go at this point? Yeah, I mean, you're... You, you know, yeah, you're there. Your mind's racing. This will be really quick. Well, at least we get to find out what is here um, and who. Uh, we have seen many other things. Uh, maybe the ghost train? Phantom train? Yeah. I don't know. So Rav showing off kind of a weird little, uh, not really a bug, maybe unintended consequence. Whenever Ifrit and Shiva are transitioning between each other, you have a period where you can run because there's technically no enemy on the screen. Uh, it can be hard to do, but... Uh, it off nicely. Yeah, helpful. Uh, maybe made up some time that those piranhas lost. Ah, we have cranes! Yes, I get to pull up my joke again. Sherry Nile? <sighs> yeah, I know. I know. Like, three <laughs> people get it, I think. Or three people care about it. Uh, well... Ah, another Ultros. Yeah, we're 
That's true. You can always, if you don't know who's coming up, uh, really just throw out Ultros and you, it's a good chance it'll happen. Yeah, so I know there's been talk, uh, the community's been getting pretty good at identifying which Ultros it is, one through four. But, you know, there's been talk about potentially adding in a, uh, a label on here so you can say, oh, this is Ultros 2. Just so you know. Yeah, a lot of it obviously due to positioning. Uh, this one obviously with the with you surrounding him helps, but yeah. Uh, until you get used to the uh, the positioning and the party setups, it's just oh there is a Esper there. So Raiden for the uh, so uh, a good uh, option for Grim to make up some time. So yeah, definitely he's he's got to be feeling good seeing that. Uh, you know now we just hope. Does he have he has Gal, right? Well he most likely I assume will pick the Figaro throne and just get the free one and then be on his way, but uh, I don't remember if he got where Gal was another one that was one of those like late game checks. Uh and it was like, Oh great. So <laughs> Uh no, he does not have Gal, so Yeah, I, the reason I say that is because although he has life three it would be nice to get that golem from the Velt, but it's not going to happen, probably. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting move. Ah, well, it is free, but it is a yeah. rather long run. It, it is, yeah, I would... I would definitely be thinking the throne. Yes, the very little note, Ultros 5, the receptionist in the Coliseum. <laughs> I, I always really like that, the fact that he got a job as a receptionist there. Yeah. I know. That was just very random that he just needed something to do in this new world. So. All it took was the world ending for him to decide to straighten up and fly right. I guess. He's probably skimming money under the table, but who knows. So Rav starting his final battle. Um, this first level, not... Uh, I mean, every level has its trip-ups. This one, he already took care of it. That, that long arm in the lower left is instant death so he x zoned it out of there now he's going to go after that head and try and knock it out because if whatever's left last kind of counteract counter attacks and that head if you don't if you leave it to the end it will quake you so uh leave that short arm um that you see on your right uh the fist if you will uh it's the weakest out of all because the long arm will shockwave you so uh generally the way people go at it yeah, this uh, the final fight here. You know, normally the game's pretty forgiving. You you can do whatever you want. This you're gonna want to follow more of a set plan. You know, you can just kind of kind of yolo it and go do whatever you want, but you can get in trouble really quick here, especially yeah, in the yeah. next two stages. Yeah, the second stage and the third stage. The second stage especially, there's more things on there, and this the the pool of uh, attacks uh, is higher and da more dangerous. Um, so not, uh, definitely the one that you can easily get out of hand quick. And then level three can be, uh, just from a power standpoint, you know what you're going to hit. Uh, it's just trying to mitigate when it hits you. Yeah. So the, the discussion there about casting life three in preparation for calmness, um, you can on tier two, the magic will cast dispel, but you can mute it. But when it dies, it also has a chance to just cast Dispel and Quarter, and it won't be muted. It's just going to do it as its death throw, so that doesn't count for the mute. So I can still Dispel those. Uh, but yeah, you can you can definitely redo it in, in Tier 3. And and I'm sure we're going to see him it's, you know, do a little bit of setup there, cast Life 3 on everybody on Tier 3. Yeah. Trimble yeah. needs some love. Yeah, I think... We'll see what he ends up. But I was—I didn't realize. Yeah, force armor and alumina, uh, also an esper. Yeah, what a <laughs> what a pool of things to get. But 
uh, only a matter of time before he does get his Esper and then heads on his way. Yep. Yeah, Force Armor, great to find the Augs now, but not at 146. No, not the time. <laughs> um, so the Tier 2 here for Rav, um, so he goes for the instant death of tools which is kind of in the middle where the it's, it's hard there's a lot going on here uh back left magic um but you can mute magic as we were referring to uh the usually the first thing to get rid of is that um besides the instant death is the tiger at the bottom uh some nasty spells uh and then uh what is it power i always forget that one power in the power that in blue the guy blue. so I, I think we've kind of settled on calling him Hit, but... Yeah, some of it's translation, but yeah, he'll, he counteracts you with the uh, 10 hits, so... Uh, but at this point, I don't think he's worried about dying to that. Um, blue guy, yeah, yeah, blue guy. I always thought magic looked like Sabin. Um, I'm trying to, like, examine it now. Yeah, he's got the muscles. There's just a lot of things going on here in general. This like mashup of people, yeah. <laughs> people and tigers and robots and yeah, and roots. If you, I don't know. <laughs> it's up. Oh. All right. So there's Grim. Got his his Esper. So now he's in official go mode. So he'll head to his tower where he'll, he'll find. A uh, unimpressive cast of bosses, except unless he just gets really annoyed with uh, having to sit for Piranha and cool down a little. But um, yeah, so we'll see how long it takes him to ca if he can catch up at all. Oh no! Yeah, he checked that. Uh, check that again. Does he not realize that he has ten? I don't know. There, there is. I mean, they have added in the menu. There is an option where you does help you track how many you have um but i guess he's gonna go check the throne just to be safe yeah yeah the only problem with that is you have to go in and check it and if you're using an external tracker you might not be inclined to check the one in the game oh boy so i can tell you just from seeing uh his full stream yeah he has nine right now so that is probably he i think he just uh, probably missed one on his own personal tracker um, at that time. So, but I guess better safe than sorry. I mean, you'll find out pretty quick that you'd be booted. But uh. Uh, yeah, that's true. So if you're trying to go to the tower and you do not have the required espers and characters, it will punch you out. It'll be like, oh, we need to find more friends, or we need to find more magic power, or something like that. So it will let you know. Yep, and if you uh, end up uh, having a dragon requirement, which we do not have a dragon requirement, you don't find out until you get to that like ending um, like sequence with the three characters in the tower, much further in. So uh, yeah, the, the button palace or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, annoying sure. if if you will to find at that point that you missed something. Uh, which with one of the newer settings that dragons and bosses can be shuffled, it becomes very hard to find dragons at times because it's kind of a, uh, you don't know where, because they can be at just regular boss ones and not specifically dragon locations. Yeah, that, uh, th that flag set's a little bit brutal. I know there's talk about maybe helping out a little bit with, you know, saying, oh, if you go to a dragon spot and defeat a thing there, we'll tell you where the, that dragon is. But even even a low requirement, like two dragon requirement, can be rough if the dragons are in terrible places. Yeah, for sure. We we did that in the qualifier for this tournament, and I uh, I didn't actually know that, and I got lucky to have fought two dragons on my way, uh, and didn't need to, uh, and then found out after that I was just randomly lucky. Um, yeah, I believe the consensus is that. that at least for the Colosseum, we're not going to see any more mixed-in dragons like that. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that's the plan. Uh, so now uh, Grim uh, 
going into Figaro Castle base or the Figaro basement in World of Ruin now. Um, still supposedly chasing that last Esper. <laughs> Yep, meanwhile, uh, Ravelin doing his final tier before the big Kafka fight. Fighting, depending on how you want to call him, girl in sleep. I've heard lady and beauty. Let's call him dude and dudette. But either way, whatever you call her, she needs to be dealt with first and quickly. Yeah, if you don't deal with the flying head behind, um, she will bring back the lower form. Um, so always, and she absorbs elements, so it can be tricky depending on what you attack with. Um, but he made quick work and now is just pummeling this, the rest with every high tier spell. Uh, and he also threw out, um, his golem earth wall, uh, for his calmness protection because at the end of this fight, they throw out, uh, one and sometimes two calmnesses, which will instant death your someone in your party, possibly two people, and then they will not join you as they uh, go up to the next level. Yep, looks like calmness is not a problem for Rav, though. Yeah, his defense might have just been, or his yeah, his defense might have been strong enough to yeah just block it without anything else. Uh, let's see if I can do that quick. All right, looks like uh, Grimwolf is finally heading into Kafka's tower, so uh, that's good to see. You know, it's got to be got to be a relief to finally get all the requirements done. All right, right fighting sorry. Kafka probably not going to be much of an issue. I was able to get that switch quickly, so I'm happy. <laughs> I always see one of the uh, favorite uh, tracks in the game for many many people, and I uh, am in agreement with that. Uh, yeah, that whole Kefka, final Kefka Klein, the whole 12-minute thing, it's just, uh, to me, it's some of the best video game music ever. Yep, can't argue with that. Um, yeah, very impressive. Um, so now it's a counting game for Rav, maybe, or as I most of the time do, forget how to count, uh, and then just try and hit really hard, because in this case... He shouldn't have too much of a problem, given that he's just chucking anything that has 6,000, 9,000 damage. Yeah, he's so powerful. Uh, this daughter is probably not going to be an issue here, and he's going to just power through. Yep, and that will do it. So GG's to Ravelin, who is going to win this round. Again, that doesn't mean that Grimwolf is out. Grimwolf will go into the returner's bracket, where he can fight for a chance to uh, to get back into it and fight for the victory there. But uh, Ravelin is going to move on to the next round. And uh, right on cue, we have uh, Ravelin here in chat with us. Ravelin, uh, GG's, congratulations. I Bye. thought I had lost that seed half an hour ago. <sighs> yeah, we, uh, there. you know, a lot of spicy conversation there. We were uh, wondering, how, how's everybody feeling about this? Because, man, the dead checks were just brutal. So how, how did that go for you? Everywhere. I think half the checks I did were dead. The hell was that? <laughs> Uh, just so you know, Rev, we did explain to everybody that you did not roll this seed, but you I, were part I, of it. I do appreciate that. It wasn't my fault, but good lord. Um, 
other than that, I was real happy to get Golem at the last minute. I was a little nervous about having enough healing magic because I had a cure too. Um, but I felt like I had all the offense in the world. Uh, yeah, you were pretty powerful there. And, and you know, I figure if there's going to be a, a, a two hour scene with uh, a bunch of dead checks, why not the 10 p.m. scene, right? Exactly. Whew. Anyway, yeah, thank so, you guys uh, for putting this on. I appreciate it. Yeah, I really like the, the double headers. I mean, it's been an exciting day of Worlds Collide here. And uh, I'm just curious, what do you think about this race format? It's a little bit different than what we've done in the past with the KGP, and then we have the, the Saturday Weekly. Uh, how do you feel about the Coliseum format? Um, so I, I like it. I think that we should be running many different formats that appeal to different people and different play styles. Um, I find 1v1 racing far more stressful than, you know, racing in a big group. Um, I do think there's an opportunity for, like, a little bit of, like, gaming. I don't want to say gaming the system, but, like, knowing your opponent and knowing that they're likely to do X or Y so, you know, you can try to get an advantage by, you know, doing things that they wouldn't normally do. But... Yeah, it sounds like a good way to get in your own head there. So then if you think Grim Wolf's trying to read your mind, you maybe do something a little bit different than you would normally do to throw him off. <laughs> Might be stressful I mean, for the racers, but as I like to say, you know, uh, streamer tears are the lifeblood of Twitch. So what's bad for the racers can often be entertaining for the audience here. And this was a long and brutal one, but uh, definitely interesting to watch. Yeah. Like, I, I definitely thought taking Burning House early might give me an advantage because nobody does the Burning House early. And then Cyan led to, I think it was, what, three out of five dead checks? So we were we were talking. I'm a big proponent of doing Floating Continent early, and Grimwolf did Floating Continent, and it was three out of five. You know, there are times that that would have been the right choice for me. Uh, brutal bosses, though. I want to say, what was it? It was Doom Gaze and Atma, and then... Atma weapon to close it out. It was it was a little bit rough, but when he he did it towards the end, so he was already pretty pretty darn powerful. You know what? I'm okay with the choices I made then. <laughs> hey, it, it paid off for you. You got the victory. Congratulations. You're gonna be uh, be moving on. Um, yeah. So, uh, Keith, any any questions or comments for Rad? No, I've. Uh, I mean, yeah. From a commentator's perspective, we had lots to. Lots to go over. Um, yeah, not not kind by any means, but he still managed to finish under two, which is always good. Um, yeah, and then you get to <laughs> move on and hope the next one is not as stressful. <laughs> but good, uh, you know, GG's uh, overall. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you to the entire Restream team for uh, putting all these together. We've been doing a lot this week. You know, I appreciate everyone doing that. And, uh, you know, good luck to Grimwolf in the returner's bracket. I have a feeling I might be joining him there soon because my next match is versus Jack. Oh, boy, that'll be spicy. Are you going to try and get inside Jack's head? I have beaten Jack in races before. It's been a day or two, but realistically, I'm going to run my run my seat as best I can. I'm not going to change anything for Jack. Yeah, I also just don't think it's a good idea to try and get inside his head. Uh, it it seems like a scary, terrifying place, and uh, yeah, nobody wants. I'll, to be there. Yeah, I'll pass. Nobody wants to be there. Okay, well, uh, GG's Rav. Uh, appreciate the the good show, man, and uh, go go relax. I will. Let's go uh, watch Grimwolf spend sixty seconds of flipping piranhas. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you very much. Alrighty, speaking of flipping piranhas, it is flipping piranhas time. This is, this is the most agonizing hour long 60 seconds of, of your life. When you're doing this. Yeah, it just feels like a lot. Yeah, especially at this point. Like, it's not like it's if it's in the, you know, early part or anything, but it's at the point where you're really trying to push. You're really trying to push. And it, yeah, just, just gets in your way. <laughs> Flipping piranhas is all right. There we go. Get in early on the Terra Omen Media Empire by uh, 
signing up for her uh, for Bandcamp for Flippin' Piranhas. All your songs need to be between 30 and 90 seconds long, though, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah, a good amount of people decide to go leave the room, stretch a little, get a beverage, you know. Uh, for those who may not, who joined late, like, uh, I see we have, uh, Boo has joined us. He missed quite the fun time. Uh, many, many dead checks. Many, many dead checks were missed. Um, yeah, it has been, it, it was interesting. So the first, uh, seed I did commentary on earlier was pretty darn fast. Um, it, it was, it was relatively friendly, relatively fast. This was... This was was kind of kind of the opposite. If I if I had to label it, I would say this is the good use of slog. This was a slog. It uh, excellent word. Yeah, it was. A, I mean, in the early game, was that first? I mean, Shatternook was a rough one for both racers. Uh, Rav didn't even uh, obviously fought it later, but Grim tried to go to the Veld Cave and found Goddess early on, and that was a quick out. Uh, there was just a lot of a lot of very bad options early. Uh, yeah, and so if you love dead checks as much as Rav and Grimwolf love dead checks, uh, come and join us on the Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide Discord. So there's a link there in chat and uh, also the ff6wc.com. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, just go to ff6wc.com and there's a link to the Discord there. You can roll your own seed and hope for 50 dead checks, or you can uh, maybe make it a little bit nicer. Come and join us, chat chat about how much you love uh, heel rods and Genji helmets. Really great community. A lot of really friendly people, like I said, always willing to help out and uh, always willing to get into a good discussion. So, so come on. So seven dead checks total, Naku. Is that... That's, uh, that's quite a bit there. So if he did... 20 check, or he got 20 espers, so 27. 7 out of 27, that's, or I don't know, I guess he had started with two characters, 7 out of 25. Yeah. True, yeah, the Illumina being another one of the auction house, even, which is, I don't even think of it, because it's, it, you go, oh, that's great, and then you realize, oh, yeah, no, that could have been, that could have been the end of that one, but, uh, such is the way it goes. <laughs> well, that's what's so great about randomizers, right? I mean, sometimes it's nice and easy. Sometimes it's it's brutal, but it's always fun. Yeah, that's. The, I think that's the beauty of it. It's just, you know, you don't know what you're going to get. And, you know, I, I, you hope that you get a good one every once in a while. But some people are just drawn to the, uh, the longer seed. I mean, I, as we will say... You know, that two-hour mark is kind of like a benchmark, especially when you're, you know, if you can get under two in a, in, a, in a seed, like, you're starting to get on the right track. So, obviously, once you, you start racing more and you see all these people posting 90 minutes and minute 40, so you hope to get it. But still, you know, that two-hour range, just being around there is no, you know, nothing, nothing bad about it. Oh, yeah, definitely. And... You know, this is a pretty, I guess, tame flag set. There's nothing too weird in here. Uh, if you're more into a little bit more zany type stuff, a little bit more, you know, randomized everything, that's an option too. There are people that run really weird, difficult flag sets. Um, every once in a while, you'll find somebody you want who does things where, uh, you know, glitches are allowed. So you can do like a door timer glitch uh, battle against somebody. You can randomize the sprites. So if you want to play as Pokemon and Final Fantasy 4 characters instead of Final Fantasy 6 characters. You can do it. There's a whole lot of options. And that's what's so great about Worlds Collide. There's a flag for darn near everything. And if it doesn't have a flag yet, it probably will at some point. So you can really play the game you want to play. And you don't have to race. You can just play casually. I don't race anybody. I am terrible at video games in general. I've never put in a sub 2. But it's just fun to play as, you know, chill out after work kind of thing. So you don't have to race. You don't have to be restreamed. You don't have to have the pressure of, of being in tournaments. Play the game you want 
Yep. So some people, you know, there's lots of people who are just yep, casual, play it whenever they want, just as something to mix in. So there's some, something there for everybody. Um, I used to, I mean, I played a lot uh, over the summer, uh, and that's what got me into it. So now I play, you know, at least once or twice a week. Um, for anyone who does uh, enjoy watching, uh, tune in tomorrow night, uh, 7 Eastern, the community race. Uh, and they'll be doing a, uh, a one of these. I talk about different formats. I believe they're doing the bingo format. So uh, objectives uh, to try and get a bingo to complete your race. But uh, definitely one of the uh, definitely if you're looking for something different and out there, this is probably the week to watch. Yeah, definitely. And, and so we have the Saturday night races. That a lot of times that's to showcase. You know, different aspects of the randomizer. So, you know, sometimes there'll be little weird flag sets. I know we had uh, the April Fool's race where Atma added in the ability to press Y to either delete an NPC or change their sprite. You know, little fun stuff like that. So we try to mix it up. We try to have a little bit of something for everybody, uh, depending on what kind of format you're into. But if you come into the war to the uh, World Supply Discord and there's not a race with the format you like, Start it up. There are a lot of people, and uh, they're willing to, to do all kind of weird async races and stuff. So, if you don't see what you want, come in and start it. Yep. And so, Grim starting his climb up his final battle. Uh, it's going to be. I bet you'll see a very similar format to the uh, the one we saw with Rav. Both very strong. Um, everybody kind of ticks sticks to that same order, especially on this level. So. Um, yeah, not not even Chainsaw is doing s over six thousand damage for him right now. So, yeah, definitely many, uh, yeah, many many options for him to take this one down. Uh, I'm not sure what yeah. he'll use for his calmness protection, but uh, he may not even need it. He may just be strong enough to block it straight up. Yeah, that's true. I don't remember if he has life three or not, but yeah, I, I even I think even if he loses two characters to calmness, he probably. It's always nice to see Realm jump at the bottom level and then land on the second level because she's already in the air. She jumped so high. Yep, she's moving on like, hey, where'd you guys go? Oh, all right. My favorite is if you get condemned and you have that countdown timer and your player jumps, they can get hit by it in the air and they just fall yep. lifeless onto the enemy. But they still hurt them. Uh, very weird. I yeah, you get hit with a knocked out character with a sword, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt a little bit. Ugh. One of the magic using Life 3 on one of its own members, so... Obviously, when he comes back, not full health, but... Annoying, nonetheless, because he has another thing to deal with. Yeah, tier two is always thick. Yeah, you know, tier three is rough, but I tier two, I just, I just dislike. I mean, it's cool, but yeah. Tier two for me has the biggest chance of going off the rails quick because it's some high level magic. You can get end crossed and frozen, and then sometimes all of your characters can get frozen, or you'll get there's the zombie claw. Uh, there. It can go real bad, real fast in that one, and it, uh, not that it's, I've seen it or it's happened to me, but I've heard some things. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've, uh, I read on the internet somewhere that it can be rough. Even a yeah, multi-target. No, I agree, I agree. If you have every, uh, every spell and ability in the game, uh, it's not too bad. Yeah, if I have everything perfect and I like it, I mean, that's that, I prefer that. If I have everything I want and I'm like high level, I mean, is that? That's, I don't think it's too much to ask, but you know, that's to me. Yeah, even his multi-target, like bolt threes, are doing a couple of like, four thousand each. So, <laughs> yeah, almost nine thousand on its own. Should not yeah, take him long. 
you get 4,500, 5,000 hit points, 999 magic points. Uh, Jeez. Seven... 7,000 with a chainsaw. Yeah, he's just... Re uh, oh, yeah, and there's that life three. Coming in. Just add a little bit extra. Well, it's not like you're uh, trying to go faster. It's funny at this level, like when you're dealing this much damage, Kefka ends up being like one of the easier ones because he you can just you know chain up a ton of high damage and he's gone before you know it because it's only one thing. Like you're not even concerned about goner, you're not concerned. The only thing that like you might be concerned is an ultimate counter, and even then, I don't think it would even have. <laughs> he'd probably be fine and then just throw out something else at him and end him. Yeah, every once in a while he can pop out and do quad nine physical damage, but you know even then, it, it's not gonna usually wipe your party. So I think Kefka's one of the the tamer Final Fantasy bosses. Yeah, and then you get some fights where if you go in real quick and you're lower leveled enough, uh, it can be downright brutal, and you can make it a you know I've seen people make it out with only you know one character left at like one health, so. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, our race earlier, uh, not to spoil anything, but yeah, we get into a situation like that, the 7 o'clock race. Get a little bit dicey. Definitely go and check out that bot if you didn't watch her. Mm, wow. Yeah, a lot of four quad nines. Jeez. Yep, a lot of absorbing Merton or just nullifying Merton. So it'll just be a case of what calmness will do. Oh, but you get a train first just to rub some salt in the wound. Yeah, train is like my most. I just am annoyed every time I have it come up. No, it is pure it, annoyance. It's just pure pure salt. Yeah, it is not. It just the. Depending on what your character's doing, like if you're magic users and it mutes you, you're just annoying. I mean, if you're depending on your what you're fighting with. Uh oh. Ooh. So. Oh, man. Oh, he almost made it. So he was gonna get locked one way or the other. Well, it was weird. His countdown timer on condemned hit zero, but it it triggered the end sequence, so that didn't actually get him, and then blocks the calmness and gets the second. That was. Yeah, that was a, a quite a string there for Locke, but not lucky enough. But it still should not be a problem at this with the amount of damage output. Yeah, like Boo says, uh, Locke, Locke must have done something really terrible. And then Terra comes in, and it's not a bad replacement, so... Yeah, this should be real fast. Um, yeah. <laughs> he just probably has to decide what he wants to do. He even bought some soup. I saw that, actually. He bought Super Balls before he went in, just because, apparently. He just wanted something extra. <laughs> I mean, taking down Kefka with all Super Balls, that, uh, that should definitely be a bingo square Saturday. Yeah, wait till the end and if, to see if you have to actually do it, too. No risk it, no biscuit. So there's Kefka's Fallen One, and there's the Mega Elixir that we spoke of at the very, very beginning. Uh, but that's why you have oh, it. Go. The oh. uh, 40,000 gold piece Mega Elixir. Yeah. I think he actually found that one at a clock. Yeah, when you can tank a hyperdrive, that's. Uh... Yeah, I was gonna. That was my big thing. Is how much is that gonna do? Oh, he's not. He just shrugs it off. Oh, here comes his charge up, and Marg still just dealing out damage. Yeah.
Well, it's good to see he still uses Realm's jump ability. She avoids this goner by hanging out in the air. Yeah, that, uh, you know, Oof. five or six more goners might have might be a problem. Yeah, not, he's just a bit of a scratch on Shadow. I would say he's been taking a lot of damage, but... Oh, and it looks like... All right. There it goes. Whew. All right, GG's to Grimwolf. So, as we said earlier, he, uh, although he lost, he's going to go into the returner's bracket, so he will have a chance to fight his way back in and win the main tournament, so it is not over yet. So, we can see if we can get Grim in here. Hello, Grim. Uh, GGs. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question to which I already know the answer. But uh, how was that seed for you? So great. Hello, Grim. Uh, I was right. I told you, Keith. I'm gonna ask you a question to which <laughs> I already know the answer. But uh, how was that seed for you? Uh, yeah. So a lot of dead checks. Um, just a lot, a lot of a lot of running around there, and I think. It looks like there may have been a miscount with your espers. I think you might have had 11 espers. Is that, I don't know if we ever confirmed that or not, but. That's definitely possible. It looks like there may have been a miscount with your espers. I think you might have. Uh, not satisfied with that at all. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, that was just one of those, one of those brutal seeds there. Um, so, you know. Again, you know, a lot of stupid questions there. Is it? That was just one of those, one of those brutal seeds. Was there any redeeming quality to this seed? I guess what I'll ask. So, you know, I got through it. You, okay, yeah. It's... You know, I saw Rav start to type in the Discord there at uh, like around one fifty-two ish, like three minutes before he actually did done, and I'm like, ah, uh, I should just forfeit now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's something to be said for getting through it and learning a little bit. Yeah, that was just a punishing one. I mean, it was, for a while, both of you were just, you know, hitting the head and then the, the, the dead checks yeah, over I mean, dead checks. And, and I mean, a lot of it was just um, where you went uh, and if you got, basically, if you got, you know, the right luck. I mean, the floating continent was probably one of the best things at the end there, but it just, you know, some of the yeah, luck well, of I've... checking. Yeah, with floating continent. By that time, I was just so over leveled. The floating continent was probably one of bashing my head three times against uh, Shatter Nook didn't help. Some of the luck of checking. Yeah, that that was definitely a rough fight. Um, I thought I had it though that first time, and then uh, I got charmed. Right, yeah, and then it, yeah, because the very first time you went in, it was like, okay, this is not, this is just too early, and then the second time, you were really close, yeah, and then the right, you know, the, the charm hit, and it's like, oh, well, right, now yeah, it's something yeah, else. The very first time you went in, it was like, okay, this is not, this is just too early. So, you know, putting aside that this seed was, was pretty rough, um, how do you feel overall about the Coliseum format? Do you, do you like the way that it runs? Do you like the, the concept? The concept? Um, good. Definitely gonna help out uh, how the randomizer does in general. I think gets it a lot more exposure. Yeah, for sure. We do a lot more restreams. Obviously, we've been trying that uh, a lot more opportunities. And then, uh, as I was saying earlier, it's nice that you can, you know, even for us that did them late in the week, you can still watch the other races see more things and you don't have to wait you know the asyncs can be a little rough if you're the last one you didn't see anything else and if you just enjoy watching you know it does takes away from that a little and this one it's you have more freedom yeah being able to just watch everything at any time is nice yeah definitely so uh you know hey um GG's, I know it was brutal, but, you know, again, you're not out of it. You're going to be in the returner's bracket, so uh, may your next seed be a lot more fun. And do uh, you have anything else, any other comments you'd, you'd like to give that, uh, that are like PG-13 appropriate? 
Oh. I'm PG-13. Don't worry about it. Uh, I want to thank the uh, the Restream team, the commentators. Uh, thanks, uh, Keith, Naku, Hudat. You guys uh, do a bang-up job. Thanks to Rav for uh, racing against me. And, of course, always thanks to Atma. Awesome, man. Well, uh, GG's, and uh, we appreciate it. Well, I'll let you guys get to bed. I know uh, for a lot of you guys, this is a, a definitely a, a later stream, so. Uh, yeah, we're pushing midnight, but, you know, it's Friday. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. So. It's only 1030 here, so. Oh, well, there you go. All right. Well, have a good one, uh, and then we'll, we'll wrap up here. All right. Well, GG's, everyone. All right, so I just spammed a whole bunch of commands in the chat there, but uh, I'll do one more because I forgot about it. So Final Fantasy VI Randomizer, again, if you'd like to come and join us, and I, I strongly urge you to, if this is at all interesting to you, come join us in the Discord. Great community, a lot, you know, helpful people, friendly people, someone always willing to race, always willing to set up a new seed. Uh, but you don't have to race. You play it casually, go to ff6wc.com, generate your own seed. Play around a little bit, and, uh, you know, hopefully you will get uh, entranced as we all are. Also there, we have oh, uh, the Coliseum, people. if you like to follow along with Coliseum format on challenge.com. Oh, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it's fun to say it that way. Uh, that will let you keep track of where everybody stands, just in case you can't keep up with all the races we're going to have. Uh, it'll let you know know where the standings are, and maybe you can, can pick out a few races that you would like to watch. We have our runners there. Please give them a follow. Grimwolf, Ravelin Bay, uh, two great guys. Both generate a lot of Worlds Collide content and uh, do some other stuff too. So give them a follow. Give our restream team a follow. Sans me, uh, I don't do anything, but uh, everybody else does does some good stuff there. You can watch them do races, maybe asyncs or whatever. Uh, and uh, you know, a big shout out, thank you to uh, to Naku and, and Frank for doing trackers. Uh, thank you, Keith, for uh, restreaming and for the comms. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, if you would like to check out our YouTube channel or if you're watching on YouTube, uh, thank you. We have a link there. We're going to start populating that more with uh, some of these events. And uh, if you are on YouTube and you get the chance, come on over to our Twitch stream. Uh, come in and chat and harass the racers and harass the comms folks. It's, it's a lot of fun. So that's my long spiel. Uh, Keith, I appreciate it. You got any any closing thoughts? No, I think you covered it all. That was, I mean, it's it's a rough seed. Uh, it it makes for, you know, interesting commentary. But uh, you know, that's what's going to happen. But uh, that was fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, and I, we got a lot more left to come in this tournament. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, if you you know you want to see some more Worlds Collide content. Uh, tomorrow, Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, we will have our weekly race. Uh, again, it's a bingo format, as Keith said, so that'll be a little bit different if you want to kind of get a, a different flavor of how Worlds Collide can be played. And, uh, you know, start looking for some more restreams of this. I, I don't know if we have any more scheduled for this week, but next week will be round two, so we should have, uh, we'll have at least one, if not multiple, like we did tonight. I think the double header was kind of cool, so maybe we'll look into doing that. But other than that, I think uh, I think we're out. Appreciate you coming and hanging out. And again, thanks to all to the runners and to the staff. So we are out of here. Everybody have a good night.